Good morning, Pine Castle, and welcome. It's Palm Sunday. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We are so thankful that you've decided to join us for our live stream this morning. We appreciate your grace as we identify creative, alternative ways to, to serve you, and, and we appreciate your forgiveness if any technical difficulties arise. While you're watching, we invite you to add your voice to the conversation by engaging in the comments. And be sure to visit our website, pinecastleumc.com, to stay informed and get connected. We'll continue to send updates by phone, by email, and through social media. We're at Pinecastle UMC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so you can follow us there. And if you post a picture of your family worshiping with us this morning, don't forget to tag us in your post. Again, that's at Pinecastle UMC. In just a few moments, we'll have some great worship followed by an inspiring message from Pastor Scott. But first, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for this new day. Give us joy in our hearts as we shout Hosanna, welcoming Jesus as our King. Prepare our hearts and give us the faith that we need each day this week as we follow Jesus on the way to the cross. Amen. Hey, Tommy and Eddie here to talk to you about something really great, Palm Sunday. Yeah, that's the Sunday that we pin our palms purple to commemorate King Saul talking to that palm reader lady, and then we wave him in the air. <laughs> no, no it's not. Yes it is. No, it's yes not. it no. is. What Bible do you read? Palm Sunday commemorates the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Now picture this, Jesus rode in on a donkey while the crowds put their cloaks and palm branches all over the ground shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. That's what I said what I meant. Okay, now picture this. Jesus' popularity was going viral. I mean, he just raised Lazarus from the dead in the same community just a few days earlier. Wait, post-dead Lazarus was maybe at the very first Palm Sunday? Yeah, probably. That's so cool. I bet if he was there, he was probably like, And you're a thriller, thriller, Jesus. You raised me from the dead when you said, Get up, get up, get up, ooh! Now, to complete all of this, Jesus needed a donkey. Now, you'd think that a king or a prince would ride in on a horse, but not Jesus. He knew the message that he wanted to send. You see, a donkey represents peace. Anybody riding a donkey represented peaceful intentions. Yeah, it says right here in Matthew 21, it says that Jesus sent two of his disciples to get him a donkey. Yeah. Hey, I wonder which two he sent. Mm, maybe Thomas? I doubt it. I bet he sent Andrew. Andrew would totally do that, and probably, Tony. I bet he said Andrew and Tony. Tony's not a disciple. Oh, sorry. Tony is. <laughs> Still not a disciple. What translation of the Bible do you read? Jesus needed a donkey, so he asked two disciples to go get him a donkey. He told them they would find one in town, tied there next to a colt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he says, untie them and bring them to me. And if somebody asks you about it, you tell them the Lord needs them? Jeez. Yeah. What? Well, Jesus told his disciples to go steal a donkey for him. What Bible do you read? It doesn't say that at all. I can't figure this out. I mean, Jesus, he changed water into wine. Cool. He fed the 4,000. He fed right? the 5,000. What? He fed the 5,000. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Not the fourth. It's the 5,000. We're splitting hairs. I'm sorry. Jesus fed a large group of people. and That's cool. He, he healed people with leprosy. He raises Lazarus from the dead, and then boom, he's like, hey guys, go steal me a donkey. I'm just saying, I don't think that's very WWJD. The significance of Jesus riding in on a donkey, which he did not steal, was to fulfill the prophecy that is found in Zechariah 9.9. Yeah, but the... And the king riding in on a lowly donkey with his way paved with palm branches, the palm branches symbolize triumph or victory. The what? The palm branches. The branch. Palm thought... branches, Palm Sunday. The... I thought it was the palm. They should call it Branch Sunday, because that's confusing. We all have palms with us all the time. I just, I feel bad. I, I'm sorry, Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is a time for us to prepare our hearts for the agony of his passion and the joy of his resurrection. So this week, 
Let's cover the road to the cross with our hearts, our souls, and our minds as we reflect on the final week of Jesus' life. And let's celebrate in anticipation the return of the King of Kings. So 
talk to you about a parade. Do you like parades? Have you ever been to a parade? I think that right now you would probably prefer to be at a parade than at home, right? Well, I want to tell you about the most important parade, and that's the parade of Palm Sunday. In that parade, Jesus was the Grand Marshal, and he was going into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. There were people and kids in front of him, and they were dropping their palm branches and their jackets on the dusty ground to honor the king. And there were people behind him, and there were crowds along the street, and they were all shouting and proclaiming, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And they were getting loud and excited, and they were singing and praising. And the Pharisees, the religious leaders of that time, they didn't like it. They didn't like the noise, they didn't like the excitement, and they told Jesus, tell these people to be quiet. But Jesus said, I tell you, if they're quiet, then the rocks would cry out. The rocks, the rocks would cry out. Wow, have you ever thought about listening to rocks crying out? I wonder if those people would have been quiet, what it would have sounded like. What would the rocks have been saying? Wow, maybe one rock would be telling us about the shepherd boy named David and how he conquered a giant with one stone and that we can do anything with God's help. Wow, or maybe another one would tell us about the prophet Elijah who built an altar to God and he offered a sacrifice to prove that he was the one true God. Or maybe some of them would be telling us how they were part of the temple that Solomon built where people could go and worship God or maybe we would have a couple that would tell us how Jesus told the story about the wise man and the foolish man and building your house upon the rock was the best way to go and when the winds came and the storm came the man who built his house on that rock he stood firm you know guys I am glad that the people were praising Jesus and that they weren't letting the rocks do it. Even the rocks ha had some great stories to tell. And I hope that you are praising Jesus for everything he's done for you and that you don't allow the rocks to do that for you. Let's pray and let's thank Jesus that those people didn't let it be a rock concert that day and that they were worshiping. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for everything you have done. And we thank you that we get to enter this Holy Week thinking about you and praising you. And help us not to allow the rocks to cry out and to praise you, but help us to remember to praise you at all times, sharing what you have done for us with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, kids. 
I hope to see you soon. Have a great Holy Week. I want to take just, uh, just a minute uh, with you, and we're going to receive our, uh, our tithes and offerings, our giving. Uh, first of all, let me just say um, a big thank you to, uh, to everybody. Thank you for your consistency. Thank you for your generosity. I know a lot of people are going through a lot of tough times right now, but uh, we are so very, very grateful for your faithfulness and your dedication. Thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, there's a slide that's coming on the screen that's going to give you just a, a real short recap uh, basically the past couple of weeks and it's going to show you our weekly budget and it's going to show you the gifts that have been given uh, for those weeks. Uh, we just want to make you aware of this. Uh, we are, are certainly understanding of what's going on with your fi finances and your family but we also want to be accountable and let you know that this is our weekly budget and also that uh, this is the, the gifts that have come in this week. So thank you for your giving. You can uh, go online and make your gifts. You can drop by the church and drop off a check uh, any way that is convenient for you. We want to thank you for your generosity and your giving. And I want to, I want to bless you and I want to pray for you and all your needs and pray for the needs of our church as well. I'm, I'm grateful that I don't have to beg. I'm grateful that I don't have to cry and get on camera and, and make a big deal about it. No, our, our hope and our trust is in the name of the Lord, so we're going to depend on that. So let me pray for you today. Father, thank you. Uh, God, for the faithful gifts of all your people. Lord, uh, you know our needs, you know what's going on, and we just look to you today uh, to continue to be our source. I pray for your blessing upon all of the Pine Castle families. I pray for their businesses. I pray that you'll bless them, and I'm grateful for that today. Lord, uh, thank you that our trust is in you. We do that today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. By the way, uh, we're going to, uh, in the next, next day or two, uh, as a church, we are going to uh, contact uh, the city of Belle Isle, uh, the city of Edgewood, the fire departments nearby, and we're going to have food uh, delivered uh, to those firemen, the paramedics, uh, our government leaders, as a way of just letting them know that we believe in them and we're with them. Your giving makes that all possible. So as a church, uh, this week we're going to go and be a blessing to our government leaders here in this uh, surrounding area. We're going to bless our firemen, our paramedics, and we're going to just give and live a life of generosity. And we do that today because of your giving. Thank you so much for your giving. God bless you.
Hi, everybody. This is Pastor uh, Scott, and uh, let me wish you a happy Palm Sunday. It's hard to believe that we are uh, celebrating together today on this uh, wonderful day, a day of a great celebration, Palm Sunday. And as you can tell, I'm here uh, in my office here at the church, and it's uh, relatively very quiet, which is very interesting, kind of odd, a little different. Uh, most most days, this place is filled with activity and phone calls and people in and out and appointments and, and services. And uh, so it's kind of nice just to, uh, to come to you today on this Sunday. And uh, we're going to uh, look into God's Word for the next few moments. We're going to pray with you. And uh, we've already enjoyed some wonderful uh, worship with Bruce and Lisa. And uh, we are, we're going to have a, a wonderful time in the Word. So this is what, what I'd like you to do. Go ahead and just take a moment and uh, get your Bible. Uh, I'll give you just a few seconds to get your Bible. Uh, many of you have it on your phone or you have your Bible there close hand. Uh, get, the, get the Word of God. We're going to open that up and we're going to look at uh, uh, some principles today from the Palm Sunday uh, story. And we're going to go to Matthew chapter 21. So uh, go there and uh, we're going to just dive in just for the next uh, few minutes, okay? Uh, Matthew, Matthew 21. It's Palm, Palm Sunday. And I'm going to read just a scripture to you, and I'm going to just share some thoughts, um, thoughts with you. So let's go to Matthew <clears throat> uh, 21, verses 1 through 11. If you're with me, say amen. Amen, I heard that. All right, here we go. Matthew 21, verse uh, 1 through 11. <clears throat> and as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent his two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you at once, and you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them, and he will bring them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, meek, riding on a donkey. And the disciples went ahead and did as Jesus instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their coats, cloaks on him, and Jesus sat on them. And a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the ground, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, is here. Let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer, and I just want to talk to you for the next few moments about this wonderful Palm Sunday story. Let's pray. Father, thank you that on this uh, Palm Sunday that we can come and we can gather even with the crowds 2,000 years ago, and we can cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Father, we come to you today. I, I pray for the Pine Castle family that as we look into your word today that you will, uh, you will help us, you'll strengthen us, you'll give us hope, and we can uh, give us a reason to celebrate today. We're grateful for it today. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said amen and amen. Palm Sunday is a big, a big day. Um, Notice in, in, in Matthew chapter 21 that uh, Jesus came and he gave his disciples a, a, um, a very specific request. He says, I want you to go get me a donkey. And I love what it says here. It says, and the disciples did what Jesus said. Now, that might have been a little awkward. Might have been a little, uh, little weird for the disciples to have to go up and, 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 and take someone's donkey. But I love the fact that Jesus' disciples, they simply did what they were told to do. On this Palm Sunday, I, I pray that we'll be like those disciples. As crazy as it may seem, when God asks us to do something, I want us to be uh, like the disciples that simply go and do what God has asked us to do. You may not understand it. You may not have all the details. But what I love about this is that Jesus asked specifically for a donkey because he was fulfilling prophecy. He was, he was obeying his father, and the disciples obeyed Jesus, and even the littlest things matter. You know, without the donkey, the story changes. Without their obedience, the story could have had a different outcome, but the disciples lived a life of obedience. 
I want you to notice too that Jesus came, and I love this phrase here, and this is the, uh, this is the Old Testament uh, uh, verse. It says, see your king comes to you, meek, riding on a donkey. Now here's the thought. Jesus is not going to do things conventionally. Jesus is not going to do the things that, 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 that we think he ought to do them. He's going to do things differently. Uh, he could have come in on a horse. A horse was uh, a position of authority. He could have come in on, on a chariot. Uh, he came as a, as on a donkey. And the Bible says that he came meek, riding on a donkey. Listen, we all need to be reminded that Jesus is going to do things a little bit differently the way we think things ought to be done. You see, the, 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 the crowd there in Jerusalem, they were expecting Jesus to come as the new political leader. He was going to be not only their savior, but he was going to be their new leader. Yet Jesus doesn't do things the way we do things. A political leader would have come in on a chariot. A political leader would have come in on a horse. A political leader would have come on with an entourage. And yet Jesus comes on a donkey. And it says that he came meek. I'm reminded of the, of the verse in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And I just want to challenge you to, here today on this Palm Sunday that meekness is not weakness. Jesus was very strong and confident in who he was and he didn't need to come in on a, on a horse. He didn't need to come in on a chariot. He knew who he was. He knew what his purpose was and he came in meek riding on a donkey. Now in these times of uncertainty we just need to be reminded that Jesus is not going to do things the way we think they ought to be done. There's a lot of things that are taking place right now, and it's, it's causing a tremendous amount of fear and worry and stress and anxiety. But I want you and I just to trust that Jesus is in charge, and he knows what's going on, and it's not going to look like the way you think it ought to look like. But we just need to live in that state of meekness understanding that the meek are going to inherit the earth. We don't have to push our way around. We don't have to make things happen. We can simply just rest in who we are and who God is. So I would say with this Corona-19 virus, the best thing you can do is live a life of meekness. Be like Jesus. Live in that meekness. Live in that understanding that you know who you are. You're confident that God is in charge and you don't need to perform. You don't need to do anything outside of what God has called you to do. And in this story, all God asked Jesus to do was to come in meek, riding on a donkey. Now I want you to notice in this Palm Sunday that uh, many of the uh, people in the crowd, they, they, they threw their coats down. They waved palm branches. And I just happen to have a, have a palm branch here. That whole uh, palm branch was a symbol of victory. They were laying their coats down. They were waving palm branches as a sign of victory because they thought Jesus was coming in to save them. And he was. But he wasn't coming as a political savior. He was coming as a savior of the world to save their sins. And so they waved the palm branches as a sign of victory. And then they cried out this. And I love this. Here it is. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I love that word Hosanna. That word there Hosanna means, here it is. It means rescue us. How appropriate a word for these times that we're living in. Hosanna. Rescue us. God, we're scared. God, we're fearful. God, the world's falling apart. God, it's Armageddon. It's the end of the world. And it may feel like, uh, like it is. It may feel like this is very, very stressful and, and full of uh, anxious and stress and anxiety. And you and I need to call out on this Palm Sunday, and we need to cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, rescue us. So here's the question that I have for you today. What do you need Jesus to rescue you from? I would say a lot of us fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of, am I, am, am I going to be able to make my mortgage? Can I pay my rent? Can I pay my car payment? How am I going to feed my family? And what I would do this Sunday, Palm Sunday, and we're going to do this, at the end of our time together, cry out and say, God, I need you to rescue me. Hosanna, Hosanna, rescue me. We need your help. And the Bible says that we call on the name of the Lord. He's going to hear our prayer and he's going to answer us. So what do you need God to rescue you from? Call out, declare it today, and um, 
we all know that, that Jesus came and he rescued us. Not only from our financial issues and our sicknesses, but he rescued us from our sins. And that is something to celebrate today. So we can still celebrate. We can wave the palm branches. We can say, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then I love at the end of that verse there that we just read, the crowd says, who, who is this? And the crowd and the disciples says, this is Jesus. And he's alive. And he's, he's here. And he's coming to save us. He's coming to rescue us. And the same Jesus that came in on, to Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday is available today. He is Jesus. And he wants to rescue you. And he wants to help you today. Let's have a word of prayer. And uh, as we pray today, I just want you to, uh, to list out all the things that you want Jesus to rescue you from. Fear, anxiety, worry, tension. Ask God to rescue you, and he'll do that for you today. Let's pray. Father, thank you. And we do cry out with the crowds, Hosanna, Hosanna. Rescue us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, I pray for your people today. I pray, God, that you would give them hope. You would give them peace. Jesus, you are alive and you're aware and you're in tune with every detail of our life. And I pray that we will just cry out to you today and we will celebrate the fact that you're coming to us not as a political leader or a ruler, but you're coming to us today, meek, riding on a donkey. Rescue us today. Give us hope. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. God bless you. All right, Pine Castle, you've heard Pastor Scott talk about creative and practical ways to share the love of God with our neighbors. Through your kindness and generosity, we can be a beacon of hope and light in our community. Go to our website and click on PC Helps to make a financial contribution or to volunteer to deliver meals. Before we dismiss, let me pray for you. Loving and merciful God, we place our confidence and our hope in you. I ask that you bless the people of Pine Castle, the families, with protection, health, and provision. Give us wisdom to understand how to conduct ourselves, to be examples as the church in a world that's watching us. Open our eyes to see ways to love our neighbors, Lord. We ask you to use these uncertain and difficult times to bring revival to our homes and to our community. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed, Pine Castle. See you next week.